So our text today is one that many are familiar with. This is a story we hear a lot and we share a lot. This text is six, found six times in the four Gospels. They're all shared a little different. And while I'm chewing on this text this week, thinking of food and as we live the word and eat the word and be the word of God, Jesus being the word of God, something caught my attention today in a way that every other time I've heard this text, I always get caught up by the miracle. But maybe it's corona, maybe it's recent deaths, all the grief in our context and our community, how things are so different. The first verse caught my attention John the Baptist was beheaded. Jesus' cousin, Jesus' family. And after he heard, Jesus knew he needed to get away. And the text doesn't go into detail about his loss more than he needed to get away. So he went and found solace in his time. Jesus was grieving. So Jesus went to a deserted place. And for like many of us, life can be messy. Nothing is the same as it was a few months ago. We're trying to figure out what's the safe way. How do we be safe without being overly cautious? And I for, know for many of us, we want to be able to grieve. I know I want to be able to grieve. And worship, the way that brings me comfort. I want to be able to hug you and hold you in your grief. Hold, have someone hold me in my grief. I want to sing praises to God and show my neighbor and God that I love them in ways that bring me comfort. But here we are in this time. And I know for some of us, we have had to encounter grief. And grief isn't looking like what we're used to. I wanna go hold my cousin in my arms and sob with her. I wanted to be with her at the hospital and yet in her loss and suffer with her like Jesus had compassion with the people who came to him. They followed him in their grief. And I think this is the example of what we do we as the church, as the people of God, as family, Jesus was grieving. He went away. But in our grief and in Jesus's grief, we are with each other. And that I think is significant. The people did not leave Jesus alone in his grief and Jesus does not leave us alone. The text says he was drawn to compassion. Compassion is feeling in our gut. And that is how I feel about my cousin and her recent loss and the grief that we encounter here right now of going to church and not being able to sing our hearts out, sing praises to God or to hold our neighbor when they're going through something because we don't want to share a virus or catch a virus. It is a scary time. But what this text reminds me and shows me in a way that I don't think I've seen or understood. 
Jesus was moved to suffer with the people. He suffers with you and me. And just like him, Jesus, in this text, he enables us, encourages us to do ministry for others. It wasn't God, it wasn't Jesus that provided the meal, fed the 5,000 plus women and children. He had the disciples do that, just like he has you and me be his hands and feet. Jesus took the bread and the fish, thanked God, blessed it, broke it. Those are words we hear regularly, blessed and broken. We, he was blessed, he was broken, and he shared his faith, the faith he had in God. Just like the disciples then listened to what Jesus said, and they shared all that people had. And I think that's why we do funeral meals, because we grieve with each other, we suffer with each other, and the significance of the funeral meal or potlucks is that we gather, we are with each other in our grief. We don't allow others to be alone in their suffering. So just as Jesus suffered with us and healed the sick and cared for others, he took care of himself, but then others took care of him too. The people showed up, and that is what this text, the miracles in this text is all about as a church. I think we need to hear it right now. We are called to show up. It may be different. It may be putting a meal on someone's porch. It may be calling a neighbor. It may be socially distancing ourselves to remind somebody that they're not alone in this journey. How is God calling you to feel with, suffer with, compassion, care of our neighbor with? Some of us may not know how to help our neighbor and sometimes it's picking up the phone and sometimes it's just waving to your neighbor and saying hello you may be the only one they have seen and just like Jesus they may be grieving a loss that you don't see you don't know but yet that 5,000 people plus women and children went a long distance to be present with Jesus in his grief. Just like we are called to be present with each other. And we are not alone because Jesus, just like the, disi the disciples and the 5,000 went a long distance, we go that distance for each other. And myself and Pastor Jim hope that somehow, even though it may feel that we can't be fully present, that you, we know in our hearts and you know, and you feel that you are not alone, that we are with you. We are walking with you and we are meeting you, meeting each other in our grief, sharing a meal, loving each other. Well, this text normally leads to say, let's feed our neighbor. Yes, that is important. St. Peter's has food distribution on Monday. And each of the other churches also do different food ministries. But I think this text is showing us something different today. At least for me in my own grief and my recent loss in my family recent loss in our lives, everything has changed for all of us. And I hope you know that you are not alone in this. We are with you. Your church is with you. Your neighbors are with you. 
And most importantly, Jesus is with you. As I spoke last week in the Romans 8 text, Jesus is suffering with us. We're not in this alone. Know that you are loved and cared about. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us look to you when, with, when we need reminders that it's okay to go off and grieve and be sad. But we also thank you for the people that surround us in our time of need, that journey with us for your church, that are your hands and feet, Lord. Help us share your truth, share your presence, share your love with those around us in the things that we do. Open our hearts and minds to share you and be present with each other during our suffering. In your son's name, amen. Thank you.